I wish I knew. Welcome back to My Husband is My Best Friend. Tyrese talks about his upcoming court date in which the judge demanded he physically appear. Hey, man, you know what I'm about to do right now? I'm about to watch this documentary produced by the Hughes brothers called Dear Mama. Have y'all ever seen Dear Mama? Dear Mama. I'm about to watch this documentary, man, so I can get some inspiration. Dear Mama. Have y'all ever watched that before? Oh, man. Dear Mama, one of my biggest takeaways from that Dear Mama documentary was when Afeni Shakur, Tupac's mama, people don't know this. Y'all know I don't lie and be making shit up. People don't know this, man. But what if I told you that Afeni Shakur was actually... And I was shocked when she said it. She said, I'm that baby's god, mom. And this was to my firstborn, Shayla. Back when I was married to my first and the mother of my child, Shayla. We went to go visit Afeni Shakur um, in the outskirts of Charlotte. She had a farm there. And as soon as we walked in the gate, She met us at the front gate, and car pulled up, had horses, it was a barn. Y'all know I don't lie and I don't be making shit up. And I'm not looking for no credibility. I'm not trying to seem like I'm some cool dude. I'm just telling y'all that uh, some really cool life-changing things have happened. And it's a bunch of stories that I haven't even told yet. But this is story time on Sunday. Uh... Afeni Shakur invited me and my ex, and we were married at the time, to her farm. Horses, it was a ranch, she was there with her husband. And as soon as we got through the front gate, she said, she said, Tyree, she gave me this big old hug. <sighs> Felt like she was hugging her son when she hugged me, you know, just like, Ah, it was so beautiful and so warm. And then right as the, the driver and the SUV went to open up the back of the truck, she walked around to the back and she was just asking, like, how was the flight and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Tupac's sister was there, so she can confirm that all this actually happened. Um, she said, look over here. You see that over there? And I said, yeah. She said, that's my son's gravesite right there. I said, what? <laughs> what do you mean? You know, she's like, yeah, I took my son. She's like, we sprinkled my son's ashes in the ocean and the rest of his ashes. I put it right here in my front yard. So that's my son gravesite right there in my front yard. And uh, I went over there quickly because it was like you know like I instantly felt Pac's energy like from the gravesite and and his mom's front yard and we was at her house for about four days we was arguing all over TMZ had a bunch of stuff going on and I had developed a relationship with with Miss Afeni we would talk all the time and she's never invited me to her house but she invited us and said y'all come over here and let's talk, you know, I don't want y'all to divorce and I don't want y'all to blah, blah, blah. And we was just kind of talking and unpacking all of our stuff. She spent a lot of time with my ex. She spent a lot of time with me. And, uh, and then that's when she said to me, you remind me of my son. You remind me of my baby. She said, yeah, everybody's running around here trying to be my son. Tattoos, fake thugs, thug this, thug that. And she's like, you remind me of my baby. 
And that was the first moment that I ever felt like, wow. At first, I was uncomfortable about the idea of the fact that Baby Boy was written by John Singleton. And it was my first time ever feeling comfortable with the idea that I did this movie called Baby Boy. And if you remember, we had a huge mural of Tupac behind my bed in my bedroom while I was living with my mama as Jody. And she went on and on talking about the movie and talking about how, oh man, you, you, you hit that thing so far. She was just giving love, you know? And uh, hold on one second. So, um, yeah, what a moment. But I'm about to watch Dear Mama tonight, directed by Alan Hughes of the Hughes Brothers, same directors of Menace to Society, like classic, classic films. Because although I don't represent myself, and I have an incredible lawyer named Tanya Mitchell Graham, who has been disrespected over and over and over and over again, by this judge that we gotta go see in the morning. I need to look at Afeni Shakur in that courtroom, being a Black Panther, an active Black Panther member, which they will say was a this group guess anybody who is black, whoever stands up for themselves is racist. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, she, she went to court in New York City and she represented herself in a major, major court case. And she won. And that's, that's the energy that I want to pull from. So... In the morning, they demanded, the judge demanded that I stop promoting 1992, I stopped promoting my Beautiful Pain album, and I was like, look, man, whatever this issue is, my lawyer can go to court. Uh, my lawyer can go to court and represent me on my behalf. You know, I've been in and out of court with this judge now coming up on four years. Well take that back two years and every time I get in front of this judge his rulings are completely egregious um, they're all over the place he's just literally making up shit on the fly and I've never said oh I'm famous I'm rich I'm a celebrity I'm this and that and I just want things to work in my favor no that's not the way this shit works you go to court you put your best foot forward sometimes you win sometimes you lose I'm not a sore loser, but when you know that your rulings that you're getting is completely illegal and beyond the scope of the law, and you actually know the law, not as an attorney, but I have an incredible attorney who's able to say what he just did, what his ruling was, what this was, never seen no shit like that ever in my life. This is a black named Tanya Mitchell Graham who actually owns, he doesn't have... 12 names on the law firm. She has her own law firm. Black woman. Disrespected the shit out of this black woman. Every time she tried to speak, she got cut off. Every time she tried to present proof and evidence about something, got cut off, got denied, got deflected. I mean, she said to me, in 30 years of practicing law, I've never experienced anything like this. I don't know why this judge don't like you. I don't know what's going on. But he's got it out for you. And I said, well, look, man, not everybody likes me. You know, I got it. But you can't be a judge sitting on the bench and then have somebody to personally f*** you and come at you and attack you and do things that are beyond the scope of the law. I'll just give you all one example. Just one example. Then I got to go because I'm actually about to do an interview with the Atlanta Journal. 
um, which I appreciate. The AJC is about to interview me. I've sent them all the documents of everything that we're appealing from this court case. They're likely going to try and arrest me in the morning. So I just want the world to know that if I go to jail tomorrow, if I get arrested tomorrow, I want the world to know that I didn't ask for no special favors. I just came in. I hired the best attorney there is in family law in all of Georgia, which is why she has had clients and built her entire law firm because she's amazing at what she do. And I'm very concerned about what I'm about to experience in the courtroom in the morning. And the fact that this judge demanded that I come to court in the morning, I'm like, well, you demanding that I'm there for what? <laughs> I've never canceled and I've never not been in court when he's asked me to be. But I'm in the middle of promoting Beautiful Pain, 1992. And he says, shut all that down, basically. Not his words, but like, shut it all down. You need to be physically in court in the morning. So I'm asking all the press, media, journalists, Atlanta Journal, TMZ, The Shade Room, uh, the AJC, not just a blogger, not just somebody that can, you know, write some shit that's clickbait, but I really want y'all to reach out so that I can get y'all all of these documents of everything that we're appealing. But I just want to give y'all one example, just one. Now, for all the ladies that's looking at this, I got it. Whatever I'm about to say, I'm a man, right? So shut the f up and deal with it. No, no, that's not. This is not about man versus woman. This is not about baby daddy versus baby mama. All of the triggers. I just need y'all to bring all of that down and just know that she took the baby away from me when the baby was about one years old. Her head couldn't even stand up on his own. She left me, she filed for divorce, she packed up an innocent child that never asked to be here. There was an aggressive prenuptial agreement in place that she signed while having an attorney. She didn't sign it on her own. She signed it with an attorney that she hired on her own and everything that we put in the court doc, in the documents as far as the prenup states that if I ever leave you or if you ever leave me, this is what you get. And this is what I get to keep. She said, I did not marry you because if you're famous, your money, who you are, what you drive, the square footage of your house, all that. I'm, I'm marrying you because I'm in love with you. And I, all of her friends, her family, and, and everybody I know, everybody she know, anybody she's ever known has said from being around her, talking about pastors, men and women of God, friends, homies, her friends, all of her homies. Everybody was convinced, just like I was, that her intentions were sincere. Just to find out they wasn't. Now we got the album Beautiful Pain. I'm not proud of the success of this album. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. Y'all are loving this album, man. This album is crazy. No skips. I can't stop listening to it. I've been getting text messages and phone calls and people been hitting my phone. This is the most embarrassing thing I've ever released in my fucking life. This is the most, I am so ashamed and embarrassed that those lyrics of mine, those feelings of mine, those vulnerabilities that I sung in these songs of mine. I could care less about album sales. I could care less about charting. You know, I love that my song Wildflower is doing well, but if somebody said, would you want your mother to still be alive that you dedicated Wildflower to? I mean, the song is on fire, Reese. You should feel great, man. The song is on flower. Flower. Wildflower is killing it. Man, the song is charting. It's this and it's that. And they would ask me, how do you feel about all the success from Wildflower? I don't give a f about the success of Wildflower. You know what I want? I want my mama back. I want my mama to still be alive. 
I want to sing the song Wildflower. I love the song. But I don't want to dedicate the song Wildflower to my mother that's no longer alive. See, some of y'all, and I don't want anybody to be triggered by this, some of y'all don't know what it's like to make money. Some of y'all don't know what it's like to live a particular life or lifestyle that I live. So some of y'all could say, if I got to kill my homie, my mama, cut off my daddy, break up, get, go through a divorce, do this, do that, shit, I'll write a book from it and make a load of money. So that girl. No. 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 I wanted to be married for the rest of my life. It does not mean that I want this woman back. Y'all are twisting my word. Why you keep talking about her? Why don't you just focus on... I'm very focused on Zelly. We good. Y'all ain't finna shame me into shutting up and talking about the way I feel. So, with that being said, I'm about to watch a documentary called Dear Mama and get some inspiration from Tupac's mama who happens to be, rest in peace, the godmother of my daughter, Shayla. Let me show you all something before I go. Hold on. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. 15 years old. This was actually, I think this was before or right after I did the Coke commercial. Look at little Ty. Look at the young Ty. Look at that. I met Tupac at a BET party. Couldn't believe it. Fifteen some years later, ten years some later, whatever it was. Uh, connected with Afeni Shakur. She loved me. She embraced me. She took me in as her own. And then told me, you remind me of my son. Tupac's sister could confirm this. Didn't do anything for me. S street credibility wise, that didn't make me a thug, didn't make me a super thug. I didn't want to go get no tattoos and do anything crazy. Like, oh, a Phoenix Shakur mama just stabbed me and said, she, I remind her of Tupac. <laughs> no. But I can tell you right now, some of my greatest inspirations have been men and women, mm, thank you, Jesus, that have been vocal, outspoken, that have been clear and specific about the law, the laws, Attorney Benjamin Crump, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, um, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, oh, my God. Just as far as black culture. Thanks for tuning in to My Husband is My Best Friend.